So that's on. I'm going to finish up my sheet. So Two minutes. Two minutes. And then put the mic on. Good morning, everyone. I'm Betsy Mearsma. And I'm Rhonda Shea. And you're listening to Boost Powder Radio as you plug in for some uplifting ideas from super cool women to support you and your world, sister style. We're here for you to discover people's journeys and the choice points along the way that made them who they are today to give you some insights for your own journey. And we always want to inspire you and connect you to great people, places, and things for your great life. But it's all about the fun, right, Rhonda? Oh, yeah, it's always about the fun. We have a great time here. We always have a great time. Well, Rhonda, who are our first guests today? Oh, my gosh. We have got so many great people today. But Hillary Baskins. I was hoping she was from Baskin Robbins. But no, <laughs> no yes, ice cream. Dr. Jamoka on the punch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hillary Baskins and KJ Mason, and they're from All About okay. Gracie. Uh, we're going to talk to them about oral and orthodontic care, how important it is. And plus, all of the amazing things that they're doing in our community because they're reaching out to make sure that others uh, get the care that they need. Uh, and then, and they also gather socks. Oh, it's socks a long story, but it's a good story. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about socks, socks and smiles with them. Then we have Cheryl Talley from Catholic Charity. And Cheryl is a fantastic human being who is dedicated to service. She runs all the marketing and outreach for Catholic Charities, and it is a big job. It is a big old job. It's bigger than people think. It is huge. huge. She's going to tell us all about the outreach, but we're going to concentrate on the women's shelter, the Samaritan House, because they're having a party. The Sam Supper. I actually was going to ask you to be my date. It's coming up in September, but I know you have so many events in September. We'll see if we can get We're going to talk about that, the Sam Supper. and I'm looking for a date, a date list, so we'll talk about that more later. (laughs) What about your husband? Oh, yeah, I have a husband. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, I'm dateless. Wait a minute. I love you, Doug. Uh, and so, and we're always going to have fun, fun, fun. Are we ready for our first interview? Oh, yeah. Let's get going. Okay, our first victim. Vic- I mean, get. <laughs> Welcome, KJ and Hillary, to Boost Power Radio. Thank you so much for having us today. Yeah. It's so fun to see people come to the show that really maybe haven't been um, in radio or interviewed and, and just your light. And it's so fun to see you here having fun. So. Welcome, because you're always behind the scenes helping people. I know that about both of you. We really appreciate the fact that you're doing this, and we love to see it. Yes. Well, okay, so tell them a little bit about, first, the umbrella of all the companies. Because, you know, you say, oh, you know, you help people with orthodontics. But you have lots of brands and lots of things. So start a little bit about who your company is, and then we want to hear about the story of how you got there. Okay. So 12 years ago, my business partner, David Pinchon, and I started out that business. We actually had worked for me as a dental assistant before he went back to dental medical school. And we grew that company and did great. And then three years ago, we were blessed to meet Dr. Jim Wilson, who's KJ's dad. And we incorporated our two businesses together. Unfortunately, we lost shortly after the purchase. But, and we wanted to connect our 
end, we wanted to honor that um, brand and the legacy he had. And so we kept the two names uh, to continue the legacy. Right, so tell yeah. tell the viewers, because they don't know all the names, so all about races, races and Colorado Orthodox. And our mission is to create happiness one small at a time. Wow, I like that mm-hmm. mission. It's a cool mission. And, and you guys have beautiful smiles. I mean, I'm, I'm like, they're jealous. <laughs> you don't have to be jealous. We have patients of all ages. We want to have you in our office as well. I'm going to send my husband if he needs help. Well, that's what I want to talk about today. Because I think, you know, first you think about orthodontics and you think about, for me, my retainer when I was in junior high, right? Uh, but I think orthodontics, as we know, because we've been looking in my mouth, um, is very important for every age. So tell the people listening a little bit about what they might not know about, you know, what happens in your mouth and how it affects the rest of your health. So the first um, thing that I need to say is that kids don't need to be evaluated once they have all their adult teeth. Sometimes people think they need to wait until all the adult teeth are ready to and that's just not the case. Often we can handle things much more easily, effectively, and less expensively if people need to get in the And that's really what we do with young kids with days when they come but we see patients age 7 to 77 or beyond. Um, with adults, it's huge as far as being able to get an implant. Maybe your teeth are too clogged with a new ortho to upload the teeth. Or you have periodontal disease and orthodontics can help alleviate that situation. And it's not Marsha Brady, ugly, ugly, ugly braces anymore. Oh. We have all sorts of options. <laughs> Marsha Brady. Didn't Marsha Brady get her braces done kissing a boy with braces? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That did not happen. <laughs> that's, that's also a fun fact. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. never happened. Never happened. Oh. Or at least never happened that I've witnessed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't think with Invisalign you would hook up no, too much. So no, that's right. Yeah, you know, hair aligners are probably one of the biggest revolutions we've had in our industry. And so, you know, adults who don't want to have metal mouth train tracks, all the names that we used to call in the 70s, 80s, um, don't have to happen anymore. We have clear aligners. They're removable, easy to keep clean, mm-hmm. and can be effective in moving teeth both for kids and adults. Dr. Baskin, bunking, bracing in. <laughs> That's right. Just when you go to the legend, no kissing, no kissing sticking braces. braces. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, and there's a, go to Invisalign's, right? That's really cool. Yeah. That's really awesome. Well, I'm curious about that, though, because now it seems like, just like in many industries, we just had a Dr. Lynn Hellerstein in here. Mm-hmm. And now everybody, you know, look in this computer app and we'll send you your glasses, right? Um, and she's like horrified. Right. And now everybody seems to be calling Invisalign. Um, you know, like, hi, just smile into your app. And let us fix your teeth. So, so right. how does the consumer, because we're talking to the world here, right. how do they know the questions to really ask before they start messing around with their smile? So the first thing is that they should really be seeing a member of the American Association of Economists. Even internationally, we have international members of that professional organization. So um, there are a lot of people who are doing clear aligners, and it's not just Invisalign, that's something else we're going to talk about. There's lots of options for clear aligners. But I am very nervous, as is our entire profession, about the new do-it-yourself. Um, yeah, that's weird, isn't it? I'd be afraid. Yeah, what if you mess up a tooth? Yeah, that's exactly right. So and not only that, there's lots of repercussions. And they cost you five times. Five, 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 exactly. You wouldn't, you wouldn't try to do your own heart surgery. Why would you try to mm-hmm. do well, something? Well, here's the thing. If you mess it up, and then you go in, it could cost you literally thousands more. And you might not be covered to mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah, Dr. Baskin just showed me the other day a picture of somebody with a pair of liners from another company that was online DIY and they lost the tooth in the aligner. In the aligner. The aligner was holding the tooth stronger than the bone was holding the tooth. Oh my god. The tooth should have never been there. Oh, that's just a scary story. So well, but do it I, yourself. I, I, find I don't like tra- to do it yourself. Hearing aids, do it yourself. Yeah. It's like, really? You're right about the Find the trained thing. professional. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Let me say about the glasses, you know, like you can really mess up your eyes by getting poor prescriptions that are not even, even if it's the correct prescription is the wrong place in the glasses. So, right. Um, an, an Beware buyers. That's right. An orthodontist has gone for at least two or three additional years after dental school to really learn about your bite, your growth and development, and what is going to be the best treatment for you. Well, uh, I know your, your whole practice is so involved with many things in the community, and I thought it was nice of KJ to wear a whole getup today. Yeah, yeah. 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 definitely dressed, and I was actually at a face run this morning for face cushion school, and 
Dr. Batson and Dr. Mershon sponsor that. Um, they That's also good. do folders in all of the schools all over uh, the Denver area. Probably like big back. I mean, it's probably hundreds of thousands of folders to get into schools. And then if people are referred by schools, they get back that way as well. They're giving uh, either feedback back to the schools that they they should start with us. That's really nice. They're constantly mm-hmm. giving back to the community. That's great. And my favorite talk. Let's talk about my favorite promotion. Tell them it was socks and smiles. We were going to say foot and mouth, but socks and oh, smiles. Oh, yeah, and mouth. So bring in a wonderful. And I brought them today. Yes, so I brought you a donation to Robbie. Oh, that's right, excellent. So we brought you socks. We brought you socks. So not not only is this wonderful to help people who really are in need. But fancy you can use this to get two hundred fifty dollars off the price of your treatment. That's good. So wow, we know that's I awesome. need treatment. And yeah. we're gonna be passing all these out at camp and actually we're kind of encouraging people to bring socks to camp. That's kind of part of talking files and we're gonna have to talk about that and then talk about all the donations you have. And uh, we're gonna match some of those donations and give you some money. Yay, so, that's um, awesome. Yeah, that's so we have awesome. some things up our fleet. But you know, I just think again it's so important that what you see in your your entire position in the community is to be a partner with the family. Mm-hmm. To understand that just going into orthodontics is a big deal. It's, it's a financial investment, but it's also the kid participating and learning. Okay, I'm talking from my past. Right? <laughs> yes. Well, we take kids as early as age seven, and I am lucky that I get to do the weekly consultations with Dr. Benson and Dr. Michon and the other doctors. And kids come in and they won't smile. They cover their mouths the whole time in that consultation. They're Shy, they've been bullied, and then all of a sudden, after we've developed that first initial relationship, now we have a usually around two year relationship with them. And at the end, they're glowing, their confidence changes, and so they want that good experience the whole time. So when we see them outside of the office, it makes it that much more fun. Staying in the community. Well, as you know, Rhonda and I both, mm-hmm. because of Camp Wapi Wapi and Camp Experience, you know, we both just face forward into how do we do good and have fun. Right, and if making the first patient visit is fun, or and if bringing socks to know that you're making a difference in the community is fun, if it gets people to understand your brand, you know, there's a lot of people out there that just want to choose a brand that really has a personality. I think they want to choose a brand that and, and a company that uh, that clearly are good for the safety. And I think that particularly when it's a service field and it's a field where you have medical professionals, people want to know that the people in that office, the people in that field really care about people. It's a good way to show them that it's not just about selling your braces. It's more than, it's not even that. It's about making you healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're blessed with an unbelievable team. AJ obviously is one of our star members, but we have them help us make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to distribute. Yeah. We've um, gone to Ronald McDonald's and served food. We really have a group that well, as healthcare and professionals and working in that field, it, it, it's really, I think, a great thing when you see your healthcare professionals concerned about the whole health of everybody. And so that's really cool. And let's say nice things about Owen. Yeah. He said, even though it's a girl show, you know, he's like, he's the man in the mix here. And Owen has a 5K cute. right now. I left him there to we run it. I love you, Owen. Owen, we love you. Oh, she was love fat. You, She's Owen. in great shape. Right. She must have took off and ran it. <laughs> she was standing next to me in the picture. I'm like, I don't want to stand by her. Oh, yes, he broke down your rule. I don't stand as you are taller, skinnier. Oh, no. Oh, no. Negative self talk. I'm just telling you. I want to know the story behind the story now. So that's the business story. and what you do and, and we can talk forever probably about all the reasons you do it but like why would two amazing women like you choose this path so I want to talk a little bit so KJ like what inspired you um in your generation has so many different choices but you know I'm kind of doing with our generation a little bit but your generation um what inspired you to be in this really traditional field that is changing the course of technology and what's your story so I would have to say so I went to college and I am the baby of seven and my dad was more than on it. So since I was a baby, I constantly followed my siblings. And so after I finished my four years, my sister was like, so now it's time for you to move to Denver where I am. And I'm like, okay. And then my dad's like, what are you going to do for work? Do you want to work for me? And I remember growing up, going to his offices, always being there whenever I was younger. Um, and he was so passionate about what he did. And he always came home smiling. And whenever they were out and about doing different things, people knew who he was, like, you know, even when we go to Bronco games, we would see patients for different things. So 
Um, I just found that, that he loved it so much, so I went into the offices and started working there, and it, it was, you can't not be passionate about it. You're mainly working with either young kids or adults that want to come to you. Mm-hmm. They want to be there most of the time. I know some kids don't want breaks, <laughs> but that's why we want to They want the results. Liners. They exactly. want the results. And, so and they're excited. They yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, you know, we're in a society where it seems that they make us feel good and we want to do them, which that's, you know, very true. But at the end of the day, I feel really good about my job. And then whenever the, everything happened with my dad and he was looking for people to buy the company, we were actually like almost selling it to someone else. And then, we luckily found uh, Dr. Baskin and Dr. Marshawn and Owen and reached out to them one more time. They had been interested in one practice and we're like, they won't want three more. They already have three. <laughs> and it just couldn't have been a better fit. They're family owned, just like my dad was. Mm-hmm. They're all about the patients and it just makes And where are the fun. locations? Well, it's funny that you yeah, asked that. On the back here, let's on see. Back. Highlands Ranch, Nevada. Nevada. So we're, we're throughout Greater Denver, as far north as Thornton, as far south as Highlands Ranch. Uh, we have one in Aurora. Yeah. That's right. That's great. Look at this. Aurora, yeah, Denver, out. Lakewood, uh, South Aurora, North Aurora. And it's Nevada. not just Dr. Marshawn and myself. We no. also have Dr. Crystal Bumgartner, um, Dr. Shane Peltz, Dr. James Bloom, and Dr. Teresa Schaefer. So we're really an amazing team of wonderful providers. And I'm super blessed that um, both amazing jobs and amazing teams. Yeah, okay. 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 And that's fun about our job too. Is, um, I feel lucky that we get to work with like most of the people there are either a male doctor, and then a lot of the people that are surrounded are women working in the field, and it's just fun to be surrounded by such fun women every day that I get to work with. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Hillary. What about you? What you know? What was your path to kind of getting in this industry? So I used to want to be a veterinarian, and I wanted to work in a zoo. And whenever I would um, chat with people, they'd say, "Oh, you're too small. You're never going to have the strength when your hands are too small." Well, one summer I spent working at the NYU clinic for special needs kids, and I got the totally opposite reaction. Parents were saying to me, "Your hands are so small. You can take care of my." kid who usually is so apprehensive about being in the, in the dental chair. And that positive wow. reinforcement oh. just really encouraged me. Part of why I had pushed it away was, unlike KJ, my, or like KJ, my dad is also an orthodontist, okay. but as an independent woman, I kind of wanted to raise my own career. And I realized I was pushing back against something that really was a natural yes. So I love dentistry and especially love orthodontics because it can combine a little bit of psychology, science, cheerleading, and art. And those are things that I love. There's always a lot of art with, with the, with the, with the uh, services and the orthodontia and, and the other things that I right. a lot I mean, there's even the shaping of crowns and all of that. Exactly. It's it's like little mini craft projects every day yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. It really is true. I mean, I'm sitting there watching what I love to do. Well, you change my field. Did you hear that? She's a little mini craft project. Yeah. I was thinking oh, of you. I love craft projects. That's right. All you need is me in the office. I'm like, let's draw the picture of your new team. <laughs> That's right. I've got the markers. <laughs> You'd be great at doing all of this stuff around our walls, all those projects that we get to do for patients and they get to work on. All right. Well, well, and we do a lot of that. Like this okay. week we had Domino Day. So uh-huh. the whole team dressed up as different members of Domino. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, we all oh, have crazy hair day. We <laughs> have all sorts of fun stuff okay. so that the experience just becomes one that's comfortable and enjoyable. Well, and, I'm sorry, you do, so you do regular dental work as well? No, you, I do not. Just so after dental school, okay. I went for an additional three years of training to just specialize so in dental. Just do that. Okay. And I think it's good for um, not just, the viewers yeah. to know that. And, uh, I just had a conversation the other day, and the mom had had a big consultation, and she had to meet with that in her dental office, and so I asked her, oh, there's an orthodontist going there. She said, no, it was by my dentist, which is great. Some dentists move with easier cases. That's a great path to go, but you just want to be aware that they did not go to ortho school, so they don't have that extra three years of training. That's good Once to you know. go to ortho school, you actually cannot practice dentistry and try to stop that ortho. But you can do the opposite. You can go to dental school, do like a couple of seminars, and then practice ortho. 
Well, I want you to say out loud for everyone listening, and we'll also have it on the web page, just how to find you, because now everyone's like, oh, well, where's the office near me? So could you just tell them about the website and where to go? Sure. So probably the easiest way to figure out which location is going to be closest to you is go to www.aaplaces.com. That's www.aaprocess.com. All about braces. That's right. All about braces. A, a braces. Okay, so we have, we'd like to ask a couple girly questions okay. now. Okay. We're girly. girly. Okay, so, <laughs> so we like to talk about when it was hard, what did you learn? Because everybody looks at successful people, right? Oh, baby. So easy to own all those earthy guys mm-hmm. practices. She can just make all kinds of money and it's so easy. You know, people make up stories about people that they consider successful. So we always like to ask, tell us about your path and when it was tough and what, you know, what kind of things along your path, the choice things we call them, did you learn? So in my age range, there's only about 15% of the income population in the country. And mm-hmm. probably my, my first exposure to that was when I was applying to dental school. Um, my dad was on faculty. And I was surrounded by people who were interviewing me, who I also knew socially and who were friends. At the end of the interview, the, probably the last question, came the last question that they asked me was, you know, family is very important. How do you juggle, how do you plan on juggling family and a family? Oh, yeah. And I've that's not that. a question that would be asked today, I hope, because it's the norm for many women to juggle a family and a family. And we've seen men help me also juggle with family. And that's actually how I responded. I said to them, well, I know all of you are very involved with your families. Tell me. I'm new at this. How will I juggle with family and family? Yeah. And they kind of giggled yeah. like they knew that that wasn't what they meant. <laughs> right. But they couldn't get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That uh, that's a great answer. answer. I was yeah. sure that I would not get admitted to that program, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've been asked that question, too. That's a... That's a you know, they don't do that they used to. Yeah. And my boss used to send me to say, good luck. My boss is me. <laughs> <laughs> my boss is me. Uh, you know, I, I just only have to be. That's so right. I just, just be me, I guess. And I would say that the thing that I, one of the many things that I learned so much about my profession is that most of the assistants are young women who may or may not have had strong female role models in their world. Mm-hmm. And so we really push education in our practice, and we have women who have gotten certified, gone for advanced degrees, and that probably is no longer. Oh, so that's, that's really and one of your, What a great, what a great, great company. company. Yeah, actually, right. two. We have two, two that are taking prereqs for dental school. Oh, that's wow. awesome. And just like Dr. Marshawn, I wrote his letter of rec for, for dental school, we have to have other staff members working from the state. Oh, that's so, awesome. What, what a great company. That's, that's really, it's so nice to hear what's behind the scenes and, and if you're going to spend, and, and it isn't a cheap day either. So if you're gonna spend no, it's an money, investment. It's, it's an investment. Right. And uh, if you're going to invest in a, a company and a person and in yourself, most importantly, invest in yourself. But to do, to spend that, those resources wisely with companies that do great things. So this is, this would make me very happy. My kids are already grown up, already paid for their braces. So I sorry, told but, you. You're but my husband might come in. We got you. We get ahead. It's all good. We know that's <laughs> that process. Okay, KJ, what about your path? Has it ever been, you know, challenging either in your personal or professional life? Um, I would say with different things. I mean, I'm the baby of seven, so I felt like I was always following the footsteps and everything, and I was just kind of continued to do that, and I went into this path. But then, um. I would say whenever I was little, I moved and went out to boarding school, which I chose to do, which is really fun. Uh, I found a bad child. I had a bad job. <laughs> but leaving home, finding that independence, kind of breaking away at that age kind of makes me go back to my family afterwards. But um, I lived there for four years, and it was an experience, and it was growing, and it was ever-changing, but it was also totally different from everything I knew. I was away from my parents until they decided to follow all the kids out of Colorado. Um, away from most of my siblings, besides one that went to one school for the one year when I was there. Um, so I would say that that probably changed me the most, and that's the age that you're changing the most anyway. That probably gave you the real sense of independence that you wouldn't have got as a baby in a family, for right. sure. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sarah has 30 hours and she will be on the ship. So, wow. Amen and amen. And the crowd goes wild. We're boarding. That's a boarding school uh, reference for those of you who didn't listen to previous shows on my daughter's talk with him. Awesome. So, what are you guys excited about now? What's hot? Like, I know we had a run today. We got a little soft. It's probably back to school season. What's the free health fair that's coming up? Is there something? Yeah, there? so on um, August 24th, we're running a free health fair there at our Monaco and Evans location. Okay, we'll have lots of people doing wonderful screenings um, in all sorts of areas of healthcare, as well as fun bouncy houses for the kids, art projects, we give away, I don't know how many hundreds actually, of bikes and backpacks for school. Yeah. So it's a really, really fabulous that's community great. event. Of giving back. August 24th. August 24th. When you're there, look at the wonderful mural we have on the wall. That mural is actually a result of a competition, a scholarship competition we had for art clubs in high schools in the area. And uh, the team that won got to use that as their art space. Nice. Oh, cool. Nice. And if you want to talk to that, then we'll talk. Awesome. You might give them up to talk to them away. Yeah, yeah, do. Awesome. Yeah, and you don't want to talk that. And I know you donate toothbrushes and, and things like that. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Well, we also ask you your global statement for women. And uh, it's really just so people are listening and we just like to sometimes we edit these down and especially next year we're going to have the technology to edit these down really easily. So, um, KJ, what is your global statement? What are you speaking to the hearts of women? Um, I would say that um, mine would be that every true queen dictates each other's crown. And I think for that, because so many women, instead of like building each other up and like either personalize like school and everything else, um, work environments, you can sometimes be so in like the grind of things or, you know, am I going to get that position? Am I going to be the next whatever? Instead of being like, you know what? Maybe they're better qualified at that. Like, why don't I push them to do that? More than That's I awesome. I thought you were meaning crowns. I was going to say, well, you know, I did, but now I'm like, you know, yeah, wrong things are wrong. I like to be a little bit awesome. That was perfect. And I would say, live your life with tenacity and gratitude. Tenacity so that you can get the job done, and gratitude so that you're happy doing it along the way and appreciate all that has happened. Awesome. Oh, that's great. Great close from both. Well, I want to take one second before we do the cards and um, ask about Kate's experience because KJ went for the first time last year. Right. So I would like you to tell the world about why they might want to get those 10 spots that are left in Kate's experience. I would say, for one, it was life changing. I went there not knowing really what to expect. I think we were pretty new. I was new to talk about some of the camp meetings and all the things that just so happened that I was able to go. Um, and I went there a little nervous, not knowing many of the women, and laughed with like tons of friends, tons of memories. But the main part that I would say is just hearing the stories and hearing how everything that different women have gone through and all of the different things that all these different people were doing in their own um, communities and everything. It was just, it was so, I just left feeling so empowered and so motivated and like, Thankful for everything. So I would say it was definitely like yeah. it. Yeah. You hear that, everybody? Mm -hmm. Ten spots left. Camp experience left. Camp experience, fall retreat. Okay. So you get to pick your card. This is our final thing we do. So you just pick a random card. Each one of you gets to pick a card. And then you just and you have to read it and answer it. And it's just a random okay. thing. So whoever wants to go first. All right. My question is what book do you wish you had written in life? Um, and I think I may say Harry Potter, although that's probably very cliche. <laughs> Why? Because Hermione Granger's parents are dentists, so it showed both her mother and father, strong women, and he doesn't want to live in a magical world. I love that answer. <laughs> very good answer. <laughs> okay, KJ, okay, what's yours? So, if you were stuck on a deserted island with only one other person, whom would you choose? And I would have to say that this is a hard one, but I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would say famous women or different things in those areas, but I would actually have to be my daughter. She keeps me in the present and keeps me in the moment, so if months went by, I probably wouldn't realize as much as if I was there with other people. Nice. Well, it's okay for all of us that are moms. It's so nice to be your son. Well, we could have you on for the whole show, but we've got to, you know, keep We've been to the place for Cheryl, but thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for your partnership with Campus. Mm -hmm. Help us raise 
over a million dollars and just a really sharing good in the room and uh, we will talk to you about your upcoming event and then uh, we will look forward to having you I'm going to do both I'm going out there <laughs> hope so. awesome well yeah. we really appreciate it too thank you so much thank for having us yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank thank you. Awesome. take care yeah. we'll see you there see you for a second as we uh, get into our next session that's cool see I, all the women. I'm in love with their business. I have to tell you this. Honestly, I love that you see that function that way. And I just hope everyone out there, if you need braces, you really consider getting in a role and seeing what you can do. Uh, well, I had a retainer. Did you have a retainer? I, I had one tube that had to be turned in the back, so okay. I had to wear this wire and it just turned the tube. Oh, okay. well, I just remember growing up, I had really big spaces in mm. front of my teeth, okay. and I had a retainer, but that didn't really stop it. But going to college and naturally, it stopped it. But um, I have a, a dental fact about me. Uh oh, ready? Here we go. Guess what? I don't have any of molars. True, because I had them out. Guess what else I don't have any of? And I'm 58. Go ahead. Cavities. Cavities. I don't have any cavities. I have a ton. Yeah. So you have all mine. <laughs> have all mine. Yeah. Well, it's you know it's a British thing. Like I brush my teeth so much because I totally, totally, totally did not uh, want to ever have to have a drill. I lost my enamel because I took that tetracycline when I was a kid. Oh. And back then they didn't have teeth. Oh. So my, my enamel was really weak. So I did it all cap. Well, by the magic, the magic of mm -hmm. the Car Radio Studio, our next guests have appeared. Yay. Yay. And we love her, Cheryl Talley. <laughs> Cheryl Talley, the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jet Jet Hi, Cheryl. Hi, how are you? Excited, excited to talk to you. you I'm excited uh, to be we, have, here. we have a lot in common, but uh, Cheryl works with Catholic Charities. Yes. And so we're going to have her tell us a little bit about the many ministries and some of the things that they do as well as we're focusing today a little bit more on the show. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, I think Catholic Charities, thank you so much for having me today. Yes. And I think we would just chat a little bit before, so we do have so much in common, so I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, but yeah, so Catholic Charities is probably uh, a little bit under under marketed, which is really hard for me to say because I'm the director of marketing, so we're trying to really market That's, why, that. I That's why I'm good. here. Yes. Um, but, no, um, it, it is under marketed. It is. Um, so it's actually the first time in, um, in the history that of cafeterias that we actually have a marketing department. You know, we've always had somebody who, you know, did donor relations, they did, but now we actually are out there going out and really telling our story and telling the story of people that we serve. And we serve a lot of people, 100,000 people last year alone. Um, we have um, 76 locations around the state. Um, we, we start at County Line Road in Douglas County, go to, to Casper, Wyoming, out to Glenwood Springs, out to Fort Morgan, so we are all over Colorado. Seventy-six locations, and that's just crazy. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's 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 a great place to uh, to work because you see miracles every day. I um, witness them. I, my office is literally above a shelter of two hundred and twenty-five women downstairs. So it's like you know, every day is motivation. You know, you see them coming in in the morning, and we serve them breakfast. We serve them, you know, um, dinner at night, and it's been a, it's it's a crazy thing to witness firsthand when you can see somebody's life being changed. So. And you can really do that because sometimes their life is changed for a very simple gesture. Just knowing someone can just knowing there's a place they can go to try to get out of that situation. It, it, it's really true. I mean, you know, so it, especially in the, in the women's shelter here, and mm -hmm. just to go a little back a little bit, um, we have four shelters in um, Colorado. Um, one in Fort Collins, one in Greeley, and then we have two shelters here, in actually three shelters here in the Denver metro area. So um, one is, we, we, it's technically uh, interim housing, so it's for women who are experiencing domestic violence. Um, so it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, we serve about 16 families in that shelter. Um, and then we have uh, Women's Emergency Shelter, which would be 225 women. And that's kind of a lower barrier of entry. You know, anybody who kind of comes in uh, and just needs help, and then we can transition them over to Samaritan House. Or sometimes we transition right directly to our diocesan housing or housing um, because they just need somebody to help them. And uh, so we see that, which is kind of a, a miracle, too, because when we first took over the shelter, they said, oh, these women are unsalvageable. They are never going to, you know, they're going to be, they're, they're in the system forever. And that was not our experience. We, we just started talking to them. And so it went from 60 women coming to our shelter to 225. We had to expand. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, women who are in, um, who are homeless um, tend to be, uh, just a third over the age of 50, so wow. which is kind of a shocking thing. Yeah. We had a 98-year-old woman. I thought mm -hmm. that was a mistake. 98-year-old woman who came into shelter because they don't have a support group. 
So, um, and, and they don't make enough on social security, and they don't maybe they don't know enough how to get the services that we can provide them, and that's why we can transition them. But they're also the hidden homeless. They don't not the ones that are counted. So they're the women um, who you know will hide in cars, hide you know behind not the normal places that you see them with the. You know, and families do the same thing. And families because the same. I, I participated in the counts for many years, mm-hmm. and uh, and you go out and look for people to count them. And right. one day there's a point in time, mm-hmm. and it's well, one it's day, mm-hmm. and you got you know, homeless, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. how they, uh, that's how the government assesses their funds. But the reality is that families and elderly and people of that nature, they're they're not, you can't find them in their hidden. That's right. So there's many more homeless than actual statistics show. It, it, and actually, it's what a really shocking statistics here in Colorado, and now I'll be throwing facts at you here, but um, we are the third um, largest population of unsheltered families in America. Yes, and you know that the U.S. has more people living homeless in the country than any other civilized country. It's, 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 it's really, I do not know either yep. of those funds. It's, yep. it's, it's kind of a sad fact, um, mm-hmm. you know, but we are making headway. I mean, yep. one thing we have to we have known, we have learned, is that we're not actually seeing an increase in the number of homeless people in um, Colorado. It's actually um, on a, a steady or slow decline. That's good. Um, but the families, um, that's where we're, where we're a differentiator, is that they're not declining. Um, they're just staying the same. And I think, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Obviously, the high cost of living in Denver, um, and uh, they're living paycheck to paycheck, something happens, and then you see themselves always. And because we are one of the largest, sh- we are the largest shelter for families. Um, we see such a success rate, we're so good at it. 99% of our people actually go on to stable housing and stable living. When you say families, is that mother, father, and children, or is it just women and children? Yes. Women or so we have the domestic violence shelters, mm-hmm. women and children. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, there's, that's it. Um, but in our um, in Samaritan house, which is our, we, mm-hmm. we're actually under renovation right now to increase the number of uh, rooms, we're going from 21. 25. We do multi generational families. Oh, we do wow, uh, right. so. We have a, our one of our great stories. If you go to um, and you can follow us on Faces of Hope on our, on our website, bcdenver.org forward slash Faces of Hope, where you can find out these stories. We had a family that was a, a grandmother, a father, and a daughter. The mother was um, had some issues and she um, was out of the picture. The father was trying to keep them together. Something happened. Which caused them to be homeless, um, and uh, so they wanted to stay together as a family because that had been their family, and we were the only shelter that would accept them because we take care of them. Most of them do not do that. They no. split them up, which is hard. It is hard, and they also split up, which is kind of a shock. Teenage boys. So if you're a family with a teenage boy, they won't accept you. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're the only shelter that accepts. And there's a lot boys. Of, uh, of weather shelters too, like bad weather shelters mm-hmm. that won't take you know, children. Right. Well, most men yeah. will not accept children. They, that's mm-hmm. right. So we do have some community partners that do take, accept children, but it's not. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's very rare. So it's weird. It's it? very rare. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you regarding uh, some of the shelters and those types of things. I think that um, why don't you share with us? I know it's one of your fun facts, but I think that we should be doing all of our public charities for yeah. uh, for what they've done for homeless but I'm just about. About this. My fun fact. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> my fun fact. Well, the thing about Samaritan House, which sets us apart, I don't know, is that it was started by Father Woody in mm-hmm. 1986, and he wanted to create something that was just going to solve the problem. He wanted to do it with hands up, not the hand down. So he started this shelter, and be, which became the model for all shelters in America. The it, first one. The first one in oh, America wow. that is actually a supportive, you know, 120 day program with case management. They actually thought through the whole thing. How can they? Create this program that somebody is actually going to transition out of homelessness. Not just a soup kitchen, not just you know an overnight you know shelter. It is a way to you know, reclaim their life and restore dignity. And it's become the model all over the country. It was the very first one in the country. Of course, our father Woody is like a, I think he's like oh. a patron saint of Denver. He know? is a patron saint. There's there's a lot of patron saints out there that are serving the poor, but um, he is one of those people that he, he was a wonderful man. Wonderful man, and all times. of all over Denver, he's touched. So yeah. many different, you know, all people, over, all everywhere. over, everywhere. Yeah, he's so great. He's guy. an amazing man. Um, and, uh, he passed away about 15 years about ago. About 15 years yeah. ago, but people still talk about him like he's in the present. So I, I know, you kind of feel like he's there. He really is. when you he, go down to the shelter. He's, yeah, he's in the, there's pictures of him everywhere, yeah. and, you know, people talk about him like he's in the present. So he has to kind of like, yeah. 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 Right. Right. That's yeah. Exactly. She's here somewhere. I don't know. There's stuff. There must well, be Betsy. You're mm-hmm. stuck. You have, you're going to leave it. Well, and she also, so, not being Catholic myself, right? Mm-hmm. Could you explain, like, 
Catholic Charities is the name, but you don't only serve people that are Catholic. Could you just kind of explain? Because I think a lot of times people yeah. look at a name and say, oh, well, if I'm Catholic and homeless, mm -hmm. right? But tell them really how the mission is. Well, it actually, you know, we serve because we're Catholic. I think that's the, you know, the Bishop Fulton Jean that said that back in the, back in the day. We serve because we're Catholic. Um, and actually, um, just even at Catholic Charities, I would say I have about 400, and, uh, I think about 460 uh, employees. Only about, we don't even know how many, but we only estimate about a third that are Catholic. Um, so uh, we just ask that you just help and serve the poor. Um, so uh, we always ask the question, you know, you know, we don't serve you because because you're not Catholic, we serve because you're Catholic. So we ask the question, are you hungry? Are you tired? Do you need a place to stay? How can we help you? And if you can answer any, yes to any of those questions, then we're there to serve you. And that's what's so nice, you know, about us is that it's not just um, shelter services because Catholic Charities is a part of the network. Yeah. yeah. So we have 28 separate programs, um, and, 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 and Samaritan House is supported by those programs. We have, you know, counseling, you know, early childhood education. Um, we have so many other programs that support one another. Um, so we have, we have stories of people who come into early childhood education, and a third of our students there are experiencing some form of homelessness. And then we'll get them into the shelter because they've been couch surfing. Integrated. Yeah, yeah. So it's very integrated and they get counseling, they get help. I mean, so it's, it is, um, you know, the entire network of services once you have you know, any entree point on the back of charities. Well, how did a nice girl like you get into your job like this? Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, so funny. there you What's go. Story? What's my story? So I guess uh, I have to go back to, I was listening to, you know, we're dating ourselves today. Um, so I, I go back to uh, high school. Let's just go back there. So I want to go back to, uh, to before that, but I remember being in high school, um, and my uh, teacher, I was in honors math class, there was eight people in honors math, four girls, four boys. And At least you can count. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was in honors math. So um, anyway, I um, I remember the, the teacher coming in and saying, um, for the boys who want to go into engineering, um, we're going to have the professor come in and talk about engineering. And I'm like, sister, sister, <laughs> I, I want to go into engineering. And she said, well, at least just for the boys, just for the boys. So, of course, um, I uh, went, to the, went to the meeting after all that, brought my, all the women with me. And uh, I said, I really knew what I, ha I wanted to be, kind of um, take on the world. And so at the time, and this is, again, dating myself in the 80s, I wanted to go to Wall Street. So after college, I went on Wall Street and I became a fixed income institutional salesperson. So that's a, a fancy way of saying I was a bond salesperson in the 80s. You know? So I... Um, I thought that was the, it, you know, and being in the 80s and being on Wall Street was a really exciting time. And, you know, you feel like you're really taking on the world and you feel like you're also everything is happening. And, um, and I really thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, you know, but there was something missing, right? So I started volunteering. So volunteering has been a part of my life, um, ever since. And I always had this real heart for the homeless. So I've been sort I started working at Catholic Charities in, um, in Chicago and helping that, um, program. And then, um, my husband and I started our own business, and it was going really well. Then when my husband passed away, everything fell apart, right? So I had a group of people that surrounded me, like, you know, just like, just fabulous friends that helped me out, my family. Um, and I thought, wow, if I didn't have this support group, I'd be homeless. So here I was, mm -hmm. starting on Wall Street, at the top of the world, starting my own business. My life turned around, but because I had family, because I had friends, my life um, was different, and I, you know, I just said I have to give back now. It's time for me to uh, pursue things that are really use my gifts to help people and to be that voice. I wish I have a very loud voice up in Jersey, so um, <laughs> 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 Jersey voice, my Jersey accent too. Uh, but I felt it was my turn to really um, help others and to be the voice for those who had no voice. So um, I had started on um, at the Catholic Charities about five years ago, um, and it's been a really great um, experience. I just love my job and love um, being the voice for those who have one. So that's my story. Oh, well, first, I'm sorry for your loss. I mean, oh, thank you. Time doesn't change that. No, no, no. And uh, what a story, though. I mean, just to go from basically, you know, riches to rags, right? When you're, when you're uh, like you said, on top of the world and life can twist you like that. And that's what happens to so many people. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, a lot of people have a, a myth that the face of a homeless person is a scraggly old person that's been drinking for 40 years, mm -hmm. living under a bridge, and there's no hope. Right. But that's not, that's at least, I don't believe, I think 50% of our people that are homeless are not that. 
that's not what we're talking about. No, I mean, you really see, you, you know, I mean, I can tell you from just my anecdotal experience, just watching, you know, people come through our doors, um, but talking to them, you know, I have, a, I have the honor of actually hearing their stories and, um, you know, it's a series of things that happen. It takes them down a path. What about Jennifer? Oh, Jennifer. You know, Jennifer was one of those women who had experienced domestic violence, and she had a child. Um, she was pregnant with her second, and she experienced domestic violence and came to our doors at Samaritan House. Um, and the thing about her, she was she was just so broken. Um, but then, you know, with Samaritan House helping her, you know, navigate how to get back her life. Um, she went back to school, and now she's going to um, get her degree in social work. And she is, uh, she has kids that are doing really well now. They actually um, were in our early childhood education, and now she's the president of the um, advisory board on our early childhood oh, education. Wow. So here's a person who, you know, has, you know, had no, you know, hope and had no, had no. Uh, for the future, right? And then suddenly now she is not only has hope for the future, she's passing on what she's learned and she is leading in, her, in the community and helping her. So that's a great story. Is that an upcoming Sam something? Yeah, so I am again looking for a date. Yes, yeah, she's looking for a date. I'm coming to Sam Silver and I know Kyle Blair is going to be there, so yeah. she's your MC. So yes. you know, I can glom onto her because she's also a camp sister. But tell everyone about the Sam Silver oh. and then everyone come with me and maybe Ryan will come. Yes. Please do. It's 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 actually the most fun event because it is Colorado casual, so you don't have to put on anything fancy. But we all kind of like get a little, like, you know, the, the lace and the boots or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to wear. Come on down um, to Sam's Supper. It's a, a meal that serves me. So it's, it's of course all our shelter services. It's on September 14th. We have it at Mile High Station. You can get your tickets at samsupper.org, or you can just look at ccdenver.org to find out anything about Catholic Charities. But samsupper.org is where you can get your tickets. Um, it's, it's, we have dancing, we are actually at the Ironworks, we have a little cocktail hour, and you know, we're Catholics, so we drink. So you can come on down. Yeah, you can drink and you know, dance and play cards if you're a Catholic. Exactly. That's right. That's right. That's right. And bingo. Don't forget bingo, the bingo. Yeah, bingo. Yeah. We got bingo. It's a big trophy. Um, so, you know, we love bingo. We love bingo. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's a great event. It's, um, you know, Mile High Station, if you haven't been there, it's really, really um, a fabulous venue. Um, one of the reasons why I chose it, though, um, back in the day, and now we continue to do it there, is that it's under the underpasses. Of, it's a great venue. Um, yeah, it's a great venue. So it's very much reminiscent of where the homeless is, right? Where they sit under the underpasses. So we wanted to kind of like, you know, make make, make you see that, you know, it's just 15 feet away from where we're having venue, there could be somebody sitting under the underpass. And that's what we were trying to do, trying to help them um, you know, come into the shelter um, and find a path to a new way of life. So. Well, it's going to be a very fun night. I can't even wait. It's my first time, and it will be your first time at Camp Experience. Yes, I'm so excited. We'll get caught up on all the yeah. Catholic stuff because I think we're supposed to work with you. Yes, Rhonda will be there. She did a lot with that. And I, I also know. worked at Family Tree. Oh, oh yeah, great. So I know. And I was will president of the board for Stride, yeah. which was definitely fun. Well, you yes. know, it, it, yeah, that's really exciting about, you know, Denver right now. I think that it's the first time, you know, uh, the past year they started this homeless leadership council, so they have a really great network of um, shelters that work together. I, mean, I call them like the, the, you know, the big five, all the, you know, the Denver Rescue Mission has a great relationship with them. And I don't know if you remember the bomb cyclone that happened a few months back, mm -hmm. and it was back when it was cold, um, and uh, you know, we teamed up with the uh, Denver Rescue Mission. Their power went out to be served. Everybody at Denver Rescue Mission and took everybody over from the, um, you know, their overflow and had it in our um, building. So we've, it's just been a great experience this past year with all the, all the shelters and stuff. So, yeah. And at Camp Experience this year, we have something called the Boutique, and we all donate clothing and gently use items. We sell it to give 100% of the money to charity, and then at the end, we will donate all the rest of that to your people, to your. Yeah. Um, I always think about the beautiful women um, really getting beautiful things that we've all donated, and that was just mm -hmm. part of that cycle of yeah. us. Being able to give them yep. something fun to wear, something to feel good at, something to stay warm, and uh, it's yeah. so important. I, I work. That's actually how I started volunteering at Catholic kind of Charities here in Denver, as I was in the um, uh, clothing room. So my job on Sunday nights was to, to help women and men find clothes so they can go on interviews or they can just wear because a lot of them don't even have good clothes. So um, it's great when we have that clothes because they come in and they see that outfit and it feels so special and it's really important for your self-esteem. 
Yeah. So I'm glad to see you doing some outreach too, because I think the community is is not aware of all the wonderful things that you for uh, everyone, not just that. Right, and that's why Camp Experience is so happy yep. to have you as a partner to get that story out. So what are your questions? Oh, you know, yep. this is like my fear of the day. So what do you think the perfect size family is? Okay, so the perfect size family is whatever family Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it doesn't make, make a difference. You can be a family of two, family of even one. You know, we, we can be a family of ten. I don't care. As long as you're happy and that you're all working together as a family and love is in, in the center. So, oh, great, great answer. answer. Great answer. So, yeah. Well, we just love having you on the show. We will mm-hmm. definitely be having you back. Next year, I can't wait to see again. I know, I'm so excited. It'll be really fun. I think you're really going to love that personally and professionally, and so many people will to hear more about how to share it. Yay! Mm-hmm. We, uh, we'll have you on the panel and we'll tell you the story and we'll have some surprises. So, other than that, that's what we got for you. Okay, Cheryl, that's wonderful. Thank okay, you. Okay, so look up Cheryl, look up Catholic Charities, and who wants to be my date for the Sand Supper on the 14th? I'm really not kidding. That's it at campexperience.com. Uh, if you're in the Denver area, I'm going. I'm getting a bunch of people to go. We're going to have super much fun. So much fun. I'm wearing a darling green jean jacket and way too see my shoes. But other than that, that's all I'm going to tell you. I don't know. It has a bling to match. I've been bling <laughs> for camp. I'm going to bring you in. She's going bling. Jewelry. She's going bling bazonka. I'm going to add some more bling to my hair. It's all yeah. bling. Yeah. yeah. It's all bling for Sam. I'm going to do bling too. Yeah. I don't want bling. She's okay. bling. Okay. Okay. Hair people. The hair women. Okay. This person there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Have you in the back. Oh, so speaking of that, yeah. Yeah. So what a great show, huh? Oh my gosh. Yes. What do you great, mean? great folks doing things for the community and helping others. That's always. Uh, Warms my heart to see all the wonderful people that are, are helping make Denver a great place to live. Yeah, and, and it's a, it takes you know it takes a village literally. Like you know, we were just talking about that in so many contexts. But uh, we had a memorial service yesterday, as right. you know, for Dr. Bill Lee, and Dr. Bill Lee was a guest on the show June twenty fifth, and he passed in two weeks, and he yeah. had probably three hundred fifty people at a memorial yesterday. And just so quickly in life, right? Uh, and we're sitting here chatting with him, and two weeks later he was gone. Two that? weeks. It, and, uh, and, and he was right on the show. He was talking about why you yeah. age. But here's something I like to share, and I think it's worth the time on the show. His whole philosophy was do hormone replacement, take your vitamins, live a vibrant life, and go all the way along as great, feel as great as you can, and when you're done, be done. That's exactly what happened. Deteriorating, right? That's and he exactly does this whole happened. thing in his speeches. He'd say, go, 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 see ya. Right? And what did he do? He did that. He it's like, exactly what he lived, did. Lived, 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 boom. boom. And we, we talked about that at the Memorial Ends, the celebration yeah. yesterday, that like, how do you want to go? And me, I'm that. I want to go, go, me go. Too. You know? Uh, and I do come over your person. I really, I mean, I'm really experience with that. And I'm just trying to stay as vibrant as I can and walk. And Cheryl, um, you have to tell him. I'm understanding. Oh gosh. Home of your motherness. Okay, so I had this thing. I, I, every year I have a theme, and this year is Face Your Fears, so I decided to do obstacle courses. So I did the Spartan Race, um, oh, in, uh, yes, and that was oh, my. a rural room. And then, and then this past weekend, I did, um, Tough Mother two weekends ago. Oh, I love Tough that. Mother, oh, that's... which is, I, it took me four oh, yeah, days to get right the mud out of my hair, but everybody kept saying to me, wow, your skin looks really fabulous. I said, yes, I bathed in mud. And they're like, you know. <laughs> oh, that so, was a great fun thing. It, it's so much yeah. fun. And, uh, you know, and, you know, I, that, so the same kind of thing. I'm living it large. Yeah, so. that's what you do. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's what this show is all about, too. Many of you who have listened all around the world and, and our audience on Facebook, we try to bring, you know, good news. And good work, mm-hmm. like Catholic Charities are doing, like Hillary and KJ and Colorado Orthodontics. I mean, they are talking the talk and walking the walk. Mm-hmm. You know, they're in the trenches. And of course, those families are coming to buy braces, which mm-hmm. are not an inexpensive, but they're they're putting the people in place to make that experience. Mm-hmm. And they're yeah. helping others who can't afford it too. Yeah, especially. Really cool. And Rhonda, how many events do you have? Seven hundred events for Camp Wapi Out this oh month, like they get it's like crazy. every minute. Uh, it, it's pretty nuts. Uh, I have I work at Camp Wapi Out because um, that's a summer a free summer camp for children that have cancer and their siblings. And we have got a golf tournament Monday. We've got another golf tournament in Colorado Springs on Friday. And then we have a couple of other small things, and then we call it uh, a mini game. Comes up September 26th at the Wellshire. And if you want to participate in any of those things, have a golf tournament in Colorado Springs in Falcon, Colorado. This is a cheap, cheap for golf course. 100 bucks. Wow. And wow. it includes everything. Nice. And so um, you can just go there, and you have to give them a call uh, at Antler Creek Golf Course. They're, they're taking it by phone. So just look up Antler Creek Golf in Colorado. Call, sign up, 100 bucks. Park, Asian holes, lunch, the whole bit. Oh, and, wow. and it's the media cup for Colorado Springs, so we're golfing with all kinds of folks. 
So that's going to film in tonight. But I have to be nice to me because I'm going to my 45th high school reunion. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, that's fun. So it must be the season because my sister had her 50th last week. Mm-hmm. You're your 45th, and I'm going to be home in Indiana. Unfortunately, you're I don't do the math. I don't do that. <laughs> it's my 40th. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm uh, yeah. I'm pretty excited about the 45th. It should be, it should be fun. Well, and then Camp Experience is coming September 20th yeah. through 22nd in Colorado yeah. Springs. We have about 10 o'clock left, so if you're interested, campexperience.com or fall campexperienceretreat.com and is kind of our landing page. Um, looking for life, photography, archery, nature hikes, arts and crafts, doing good deeds, and going out and helping the community in Colorado Springs, as well as uh, meditation and high ropes course and just anything you can think of. And plus, it's just getting together with your friends. It well, is yeah, a great it's a time. very deep dive into amazing women. So imagine all the coolest women you've ever met that are in a Except great me. big Aunt Rhonda, <laughs> in a great big camp where we have delicious wine, beautiful food, organic meals, a labyrinth to walk, oils to, to bathe yourself in, um, shopping, spa services, and Hazel Miller doing karaoke. And we've got uh, Hazel Miller is coming, and I she can't is. Wait. I'm not singing with Hazel Miller. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. But um, there's also somebody whose daughter's coming who happens to be like a big actress. And I'm like, will she be in the talent show? Because you know, more our talents kind of oh, yeah. talents and quote. Maybe I'll do some comedy this I year. I might. I haven't done it in a few years. Maybe I will. I got an idea for some comedy. Right. I might try. Um, I'm out. Okay. 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 Also, Brittany Curry, the silver medalist. Brittany Curry, the silver medalist yeah. from the Olympics, and. She's probably going to bring some other people. We're trying to get Sammy, who's the mm-hmm. pentathlete, mm-hmm. who I think is already on the Olympic team. Wow. Uh, so some of the Olympic people will be there. Amazing auction. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the auction items is Tell Your Story with Betsy and Kyle Bond. Because I met Kyle through giving a speech, and Kyle's very involved with Kathy Taylor. Yeah. And she was her. at that she's speech. Great. And so um, she is going to come down and be part of camp, and she's our final keynote, How I Learned to Listen. Yeah. And Kyle is great. She really in the same is. Sanctuary, yes. so it's going to be awesome. Uh, Gina Shrek, you've got Tim North, you've got Laura Newman, you've got really cool Miller. doctors. We have a like a, a women's kind of health doctor. We're going to talk about some of that stuff. Um, oh. You know, so it's just for those of you who don't know what this is, it's really just education, inspiration, connection, all packed into a weekend of having fun. So we can say do good and have fun. Yep. So um, if you're interested, please grab one of those spots. But one thing I do want to do is I want to say it again, campexperience.com oh, camp is the entire network, three networking events called Camp Connections every month, plus something called Talking Conversations every month, then social events, we have one next week on Thursday, the Hair People Hair Bling Night, and being a part of the, I'm going to interrupt you because I know you don't have to pay to be part of the Camp Experience Network. Yeah. If you go to some of these activities like the camp, of course you are, but the rest of the stuff you can do that with everything. It's free. Awesome. All the sponsors chip in, so everything is free throughout the year and you pay to go to the conference. But I would like to present to Catholic Charities Woo! some socks Woo! and also toothbrushes and toothpaste. Because I bet we have a bin oh, somewhere. Yeah. We do and have a bin. Thank you for uh, from KJ and from Hillary. They brought all this. And I think oh, this is fabulous. You can take it home in your purse. Yes, and I can. Some lucky kids and moms will have some. Oh, it's wonderful. They love that. That's Especially back to school. This is so great. They, they love these socks. Yeah. The socks are the number one thing that homeless people need. Number one thing. Because we get really bad. Yeah, it's, it is amazing how much, you know, we go through and we just don't get socks. You know, people usually don't get clothes, but they don't get socks. Well, I have a hook up for you. Yeah. Okay. We got a sock for you. I'm socks I can Yay. And I will, uh, uh, there will be socks in your future. Socks <laughs> in my future. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. There's socks in your future. Well, you get to celebrate the end of the show with me and Rhonda. We do something okay. silly. I think we let our special guest draw the card. Oh, yeah, let her draw the card. Okay. Oh, because, oh, oh, okay. so, you know, you've already done your work card, but we always Try to do it. Like, my so insight, that's why I have to answer. No, we answer. <laughs> my, yeah. um, so my big insight from today's show is um, women who can. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so cool to see KJ's generation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He was that youngest of seven who went away to boarding school to do it her own way, mm-hmm. who got behind her dad, and then they got bought by the right practice because yeah. Hillary really nurtured KJ, and she bloomed at camp last year. Yeah. So I think women who can would be mine. What would be your insight for the show? My insight would be that everyone here discussed happiness and, and not not meaning that you're jumping around maybe I should say joy you know I, what I pull from that is uh, from the homeless is the joy that, that Catholic Church brings to them uh, even if it's for a moment people need joy in their life and you can also carry joy in your life you know without sitting around being giddy and laughing at anything and uh, and I heard the same thing as I'm giving a message through the Orthodox people because they were talking about joy really the, the joy of of changing something that you're embarrassed by and not being happy with yourself and things. 
So we're looking at you know, realizing, wow, that's me. You know, and that's a, that's an internal thing. So that's what I do. Yeah, and I think that family, um, like you said, family is however many that you're loved by, that you share love with. It's all about love. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why we're here. Yeah. Share the love. Yep. I think that that's what's really cool. That's what bonds kind of camp experience. It's mm -hmm. the family of Camp Yappy. It's the family of Happy Charities. Mm -hmm. And it's the family of us as camp sisters who just said, you good and have fun. Come on in. Do yep. good and have fun. Isn't that like the best tagline ever? Thank you. I think it is. But, <laughs> it I, is you know, it's kind of what we just realized that mm -hmm. we always did. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's cool because now I can say, you need flop. I can make a call. Mm -hmm. And I have 30,000 flops. And, and she has yeah. delivered so much clothes to me already. Yeah, so, so read your hand. Okay, so when it's over, I want to say, all my life, I was a bride married to a new mm -hmm. Oh, that's point. Mm -hmm. that's okay. okay, one more time. When it's over, all I want to say, all my life I was a bride married to a movement. It's not cool. home color. I know most of you guess that. That's the audio guess. Yeah. 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 So please, next week, we have a music <laughs> show because it's the holiday weekend. Betsy and Robert are going to have a wonderful music show for you. And then we have a grand finale, our year celebration show on September 14th. We will see you on Blues Power Radio. See you then. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. 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 I guess I'm trying to use that. No, it was good. Yeah. It's, it's live on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, good. Hey, awesome job. Stop sweating. <laughs> 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 it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. It was good.